The coalition, being one part of the coin that is Armistice, is a multinational alliance that consists of operators from Western forces like the SES, Demon Dogs and Warcom. In total, including the Milsim operators, the coalition contains 26 operators. However, since I already covered the base in Season 1 through Season 3 operators, in this video we're taking a look at operators from the 4th until the 6th season. Captain Jonathan Price, Kyle Gasgarek, Sergio Mortezula and Marcus Griggs. Season 4 introduced the Captain. Captain Jonathan Price, simply known as John Price or Bravo 6, has spent most of his career fighting in the shadows. He's been shot, captured, abandoned, blown up, locked up, tortured and left for dead. Price is a veteran of military operations in nearly every conflict-prone corner of the world, distinguishing himself with acts of gallantry and intrepidity. His achievements have risen to the stuff of regimental history. Price joined the infantry at the age of 16 and has served in the British Army for 18 years. One of the youngest cadets to ever graduate the Royal Military Academy as a commissioned officer, he completed special service commando selection and was badged a member of the SAS, proving his worth on countless covert operations over multiple deployments in the Middle East. Promoted to Captain in 2011, callsign Bravo 6, Price is the officer in charge of a highly effective unit tasked with anti-hijacking counter-terrorism, specializing in close quarters combat, sniper techniques and hostage rescue. He is unofficially missioned to capture or kill high value targets. Blessed with uncanny instincts and an unchecked determination, Price is a peerless combat tracker known for excelling in a fluid and volatile environment. An elite seek and strike expert, Price is first in a wide range of fieldcraft and tactical capability. From airborne shock trooper to long range reconnaissance operator, Price is a covert, jungle desert and urban operator, sniper and saboteur. With a knack for developing and maintaining links to foreign fighters across the globe by earning goodwill through thrust, Price works closely with Western intelligence agencies assigned to aggressively pursue HVTs. His counter-terrorist squadron is on call to mobilize anywhere in Europe with immediate readiness. Price believes that the duty of every soldier is to fight for the greater good. The rules of engagement don't change, but their justification does. Price always fights for what's right, but he knows what's right isn't always what you're fighting for. He has often said, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Sometimes unpredictable and unrestrained, Price has made a golden rule all his own. We get dirty and the world stays clean. Although an officer, Price has always preferred to keep the company of an enlisted warfighter. He often tells new recruits all it takes to change the course of history is the will of a single man or a woman. Not above a rogue move or unholy alliance in the name of getting the job done, Price has a deep but often strained relationship with the system. Specializing in unconventional warfare, Price is a target-focused warfighter who deploys a cut-to-the-chase lethality. Early in his career, whilst he was still a lieutenant, Price was involved in an assassination attempt on the ultra-nationalist politician Imran Zakayev, under the command of Captain Macmillan in Pripyat, Ukraine. After the failed CIA operation in Verdansk, Kastovia, Price was contacted by Laswell, which started his involvement in the War on Terror. After the creation of Task Force 141 and the complications in Verdansk, the discovery of bunkers used to store Alcatala weapons, and the underground tunnel system that Zakayev used to move radiological material, Price conducts an operation in the city alongside gas. All call signs, this is Echo Charlie Hotel 20, line is open, how copy? Watch your one is 5x5, five five. Nikolai? Yes, Laswell. Good to hear your voice. Sigint suggests target Denver schedule the priority call with an unknown. Let's go live. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I have a delivery for you. Roses or weeds? Both, I am afraid. The opposition is moving new ornaments into territory, Victor. Good. Let them. And the weeds? They are enlisting the help of a senior operator. I have only one picture of this man, but the quality is poor. Who is he? An old friend. One man? Is this a problem? Yes. A big one. Why you must? They're gone, ma'am. Copy. You can run. But you can't hide. Verdansk was ground zero in the Cold War. A city of tunnels, gulags, bunkers, and weapons of mass destruction. 
This is Viktor Zakayev. His father was a Soviet-era hero who wanted a world war he never got. So Viktor found a willing partner to fulfill his father's wishes. Al-Assad had an axe to grind against the superpowers. He was free, armed, and turned loose. The coalition and Legion's forces signed treaties and sent in their best to restore order. But Zakayev pulled strings, so distrust and divided. We turned our guns back on each other, just like he wanted. Intel says there's still a hidden world here and plans to use it. It's a bloody powder keg. It's a guy who's already lit the fuse. Let's get it done, yeah? Bravo 6. Kyle Gas Garrick, otherwise known as Sabre 26 or Bravo 26, enlisted in the British Army in 2014, serving in the Duke of Lancaster's regiment. Spending four years participating in test flights, jump competition, and marksmanship before passing selection for Her Majesty's Elite Special Air Service or SES, where he currently serves as a sergeant for his sixth year. Tasked to Northern Ireland, Bosnia, Turkey, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria, Gas has spent the better part of his career hunting terrorist fighters. He earned the US Marine Corps gold parachute wings at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina whilst on an exchange attachment and routinely cross loads on operations with the SES American counterparts, the Navy SEALs. Required to undergo resistance training to interrogation testing, Gas was the only candidate in his class to escape the facility and evade capture. Routinely subjected to physically and mentally uncomfortable scenarios, Gas prides himself on a high tolerance and tactical awareness. He was awarded the Queen's Gallantry Medal and the General Service Medal for both covert counterterrorism operations in the Middle East, disrupting opium supply lines and poppy productions, a major source of terrorist financing. His last Middle Eastern tour was cut short due to an ever-changing political climate and a growing intolerance for full-throated unconventional warfare. Fading support for Western-backed guerrilla movements as well as growing regional tension complicated matters in the field as men as gas are asked to do an imperfect job perfectly well. With expertise in prime target elimination, demolitions, weapon tactics, covert surveillance and VIP protection, Gas currently serves on the SES domestic counter-terror program, executing home field missions with the Metropolitan Police Forces on European soil. Challenging duty due to civilian and collateral damage issues, Gas seeks the opportunity to serve abroad again and make a real difference combating the threat of terror. His involvement in the war on terror as it started in Piccadilly Circus is known to us, but after the destruction of Barkov's chemical factory, Price put Gas on Task Force 1 for 1, where he got the nickname. Not long after he was deployed alongside Price to Verdansk. His finishing move, Ice to Meet You, used an ice pick as seen in the Modern Warfare 2 campaign mission, Cliffhanger. Sergio Mortesula is an Italian warcom operator and a skilled tracker who loves the Old West and strongly adheres to his own rules regarding right and wrong. As a young boy, Morta grew up in Il Repubblica Italiana, watching films that his fellow countrymen produced and directed, Spaghetti Westerns. Inspired by these fictional heroes, the man named himself the Italian word for death and made it his destiny to become a lawbringer of justice. That involved a personal search for his interpretation of right and wrong, as this mercenary wants his own moral codes to properly correct injustice no matter the mission. His incredible gunslinging skills akin to the rangers he idolized and true grit earned him service with legendary Il Nono, the 9th paratroopers assault regiment Col Machine, or simply Col Machine, the short name for his special forces unit recognized around the world. After spending two years trained to be in the regiment and participating in multiple operations, Warcom offered Marte a place among the multinational coalition force. He accepted the offer, but only on two conditions. He brings along his faithful sidekick, Tuco, a red-tailed hawk, and he provides his own uniform. Sergeant Marcus Griggs, or Demon 1-2, cousin of William Griggs, is a member and leading operative of the Demon Dogs unit in the United States Marine Corps. He and his unit assisted Alex in the capturing of the wolf in the hospital in Ramaza, Urzikstan, while repelling other al qatala terrorist cells. Since the original Staff Sergeant Griggs' full name is classified, it's unknown whether Marcus or William Griggs is the one we all know and love, 
However, since Marcus Griggs had the largest role in the campaign, it's likely he will fill his shoes. Priced in the end of the trailer for the sixth season, advises Griggs to stand by to move into what probably is the underground. What next season will bring is unknown, but with a nuclear bomb evolved and Cold War coming out soon, a Warzone map changing event isn't unlikely. Thank you guys very much for watching. The creation of these videos is very time consuming, from writing the script to designing the motion graphics. If you like these type of videos and want to support me in continuing creating, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of the video, other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself, it shows how I can improve. And the last way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars a month. In return you will unlock exclusive rewards such as, such as digital lore items and exclusive posts or perhaps unique ideas you can implement. The more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube and in turn this will result in more frequent uploads and a higher quality content. Whatever you decide to do, I'll be here because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching, peace out.